Hey, music money makers. I know a lot of you all are trying to figure out who the target audience in that target market we went through, uh, what, two days ago? You're trying to figure out who's the audience in that market. Like we found the, the, the market, but now we need to know who are these people that are going to come and see us. And this is a particular dilemma that a lot of people or a lot of artists and labels who have artists are trying to figure out for their artists or artists themselves. Who is the target audience? Where do I find them? This is probably more simple than actually finding your target market. But it took me a minute to realize that, oh, this is not as hard as it seems. And that's what we're gonna jump into on today's episode of the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham and let's hop right into it. So what I'm getting at is your fans, the audience is a direct reflection of you. 100% some piece, some way, some shape, some form or fashion of you, the way, you know, the way you are, the way you feel, your spirit, all this stuff together, your audience is a reflection, a direct reflection. This is why we all have unique audiences. Now we, you know, if you're a fan of Jet Life, you know, I'm gonna be a fan too, but we all like Currency and the Jet Life crew for some reason, some way, shape, form, or fashion. There was a guy that approached me in a grocery store and he was like, yo man, are you that dude from YouTube? I'm like, yeah, but guess what he was wearing? He was wearing a Jet Life sweater. It would make sense. I'm a fan of Jet Life. He's a fan of Jet Life to buy that, that sweater. And so I knew that, okay, my theory is not a theory anymore. This is actually what it is. Your fans are a direct reflection of you. Now, here comes the part that you've heard before. Well, we need to figure out an age range here. This is when we open up the market. Our age range is gonna be plus 10 years, minus 10 years. Always gonna be that, okay? The buying range may be a little bit smaller. I'll get into that in the course but the age range of your reception of people receiving you is about 10 years. Now your regional location, what's your geographical location? Now this goes back into the market that we were talking about yesterday. Now, if I'm focusing on a local, local market, yes, we have our city as the local market, our few zip codes as the local market that we will start off in. But really, when it comes to our fan base, we can judge about a 500 or 600 mile radius. For me, if I was back home, I'm from Georgia. I'm from Savannah, Georgia, okay? I'm from down there. I ain't really from Atlanta, so I can just hang loose and be free. But my, my market would be, I could freely speak to anyone from Savannah to Atlanta to Birmingham to Chattanooga to Columbia to Charlotte to Jacksonville to Miami and they would understand that oh he's a water boy he's from you see what I'm saying so now because of how I carry myself the way I talk they're gonna the people are gonna realize oh this guy is from the south for real okay now that's your regional audience 500 miles. And remember, we're starting low. I'm, we're not going far. We're pairing your market with your audience and we're putting it together so people can actually find you and you can know exactly who they are. All right. Because where you're from has an influence on your style of music. I can hear the difference when producers make beats from up north and they have those high pitched 808s and hard thin 808s versus the people in the south. When we make 808s, it's like, in the G area, you know, the key of G, but the people from the North are making it in the key of A, and that's too high, you know what I'm saying? So we gotta have it low, cause we got 10s, 12s, and some of us from back in the day, we got 15s in the trunk. I don't know why you got 15s in the trunk nowadays anyway. But then we gotta go to our next thing, which is the lifestyle interest. Now this alone lets you know, just like the, the partner that I met right there in the grocery store who had the Jet Life sweater, that's a lifestyle interest. I'm interested in, in, in currency and jet life and all that cool stuff, right? It's my favorite rap crew. And this guy is too. We share a lifestyle interest of that particular type of music. You get what I'm saying? You all, whether it be, you know, things that I wear on the outside or how I speak or whatever it is that you're getting from me, inside of you is a direct reflection of who I am. And we get better together. And that's how we have an audience. And that audience turns into a community. And that's how you have fans, okay? 
is how this works. So now that you know that secret, you know who you're looking for in your market. Now, the next part is where are they? Where are these people that are a direct reflection of you? Where can you find these people? These people can be found wherever your lifestyle interests are, period. Once you find these people, once you connect with these people over those interests, you got them. You got a fan. You got a more qualified, as you would call it in sales and business, you have a more qualified lead. It's very simple. You like Chinese food? I like Chinese food. Bet. You know what I'm saying? We go to the same place. Check out my music. Oh, word? Cool. I'll check it out. This is dope. You bond over things. Like, I'm not going to... Actually, I'm not going to put that in the video. I had some I was going to put in the video, but I have something here. It's like, oh, you bond over... You like, you like that? I like this too. Great. We, let's exchange information. You get what I'm saying? You like coffee? I like coffee. Great. You get what I mean? That's how you find the people over the lifestyle interest. Now, it's where do these interests occur that you're going to find these people. That's what we got to get into. Now, I'm not going to do it on this video, but I just want to put it out there for you. My last key to this video is how do you get them to stay? The key word is necessity. You get the fan or the new qualified lead to stay because you have something they need that empowers them to get to the next day. Whatever it is you have is increasing their quality of life in some way, shape, form, or fashion to get to the next moment, to get to the next hour, day, whatever. Necessity is how you keep them. Now, you may say, if I'm too unique, how will I find them then? You're, you're actually not too unique. I mean, you're, you're put in this world to handle a job, a task. Uh, you're here for a reason. So they will find you and you will find them. You're not too unique. Trust me. And if you think that you're too old to make music, you're not too old to make music because I enjoy jazz music. And quite frankly, for those of you all who sample music, Herb Alpert didn't die yet. And his guy is still putting out records. You know what I mean? Still playing the trumpet, still putting out records. So it doesn't matter how old you are. You can still build a fan base if you have that fire inside of you to push forward. Now, if you have a record label, you can do this for the record label. But you got to think when it comes to record labels, Record labels are built on the brand based on the type of artist they sign, okay? And you can only use this formula for the artist that you sign. Then, based on how many of those artists you sign over time, this audience then becomes the type of audience that will frequent your record label uh, projects, if you will. So that's how that'll work. Now, I go into grave detail with this off of... YouTube. Okay. So if you want to go in more deeper than this, this will be in the course, but also you can book a call as well. Cause it's going to be a little bit of time before that course comes out, but book a call. We'll go through this together, but I want you to start to unlock the fan base by yesterday's or, uh, or uh, the video the other day. I forgot to title that quickly. And this one right here, unlock the market, unlock the base. At the end of the day, a targeted fan base leads to more listeners, which equals more fans, more fans, which equals more money and more money, which equals more growth at the end of the day. Now, if you say, hey, let's still go out here and wing it after having this, then what's going to happen is you'll have a fan base that's spread out. Like I said yesterday, like it's 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 spread out. You know what I mean? And, and when you have that, it's very hard to target these people, to get them to come to a show. You might be able to get them to buy merch, but it's very hard to bring them in and, and, and lasso and, and, and round them up to come to a show when you don't know who they are. You get what I'm saying? So in the beginning, I know you didn't have a clue about, okay, what's the difference between the market and the audience, but now you kind of know, okay, the audience is inside of the market. Okay, the audience is a direct reflection of me that is inside of my local market. All right. And people inside of my local market will know me within a 500 mile radius based on a 10 year age or 20 year age gap. Me sitting in the middle. Right. And my lifestyle interests. Now, even though that's very easy on the surface, it's finding them within the local market when you don't have a fan base yet. And that's why I say book a call with me so we can go through that. Because after you build your record label at the end of the day, you got to start getting these people and that's going to empower you. All right, music money makers. So if you make music, you should make money. I'll see you next time. Peace.